Most of you are probably familiar with command blocks. You place one in your world, type in a command, activate it, and it runs the command. Simple enough, and you can combine them together to make some pretty cool stuff. However, there's three main issues with using them for your projects. They cause a lot of lag, they're basically locked to one world, and most importantly, they suck to use. Like, do you want to try and bug fix this? A data pack, on the other hand, is a folder stored within your Minecraft world that has files with all the commands you want to run. They are way less laggy, easy to transfer across worlds, super easy to develop and bug fix in, and also enable you to use a bunch of new and amazing features such as custom advancements and recipes. It'll make more sense once you get started, and trust me, they're really not that complicated. Now that you have more of an idea of what a data pack is, let's make one. First off, when writing commands in a data pack, it's very difficult to write them like this. So I'd recommend using a more advanced text editor, specifically VS Code, where people have made plugins that add syntax highlighting and can autocomplete commands as you're typing. To install VS Code and set it up for data pack development, you'll first want to click on the link in the description to open the download page. Then click the download button for whatever operating system you have. Once the file is downloaded, open it up and click through the installation process. Now make sure you tick these two add open with code action options because they'll be important later. Once VS Code is installed, open it up and you should have something that looks like this. You want to go to the top left and click extensions. Then type in the search bar data pack helper plus and then click install. Great. Now that VS Code is all set up, it's time to choose a Minecraft world and actually create a data pack in it. Go into Minecraft single player and select one of your worlds from the list. Click edit and then open world folder. This should bring up your Minecraft world folder on your computer like so. Open up the data packs folder, who'd have guessed, and create a new folder with whatever name you want your data pack to have. Then, right click on that folder and select open with code. This will open your folder up inside Visual Studio Code and you can see it right here. This is why we had to select those two options at the beginning of the installation. First you need to tell Minecraft that this isn't just an ordinary folder, it's a data pack. So we want to create a file by clicking on this new file button up here and call the file pack.mcmeta. Now in the description of this video will be the text you need to put in this file, so just copy and paste from there. This is telling Minecraft the version the data pack is for and giving it a short description. You can put whatever you want here, I'm going to leave it how it is. Now create another folder called data, or as most of you will say it, data. And within that folder, create another folder. Now this is where all the actual meat and potatoes of the data pack will go. You can name it whatever you want, but every time you need to reference something from your data pack, like one of those function files with your commands, you'll need to prefix it with the name of this folder. So name it something short instead of Cool Gamer 52's very epic data pack, and your fingers will thank you later. I'll name mine example. Now create yet another folder within this folder called function. This is where all those command files I've been talking about will live. Now there are two function files that are mandatory for every data pack, tick and load. So let's create them both with the special file extension of .mc function to let Minecraft know that they are function files. The tick function runs every single Minecraft tick, just like a repeating command block. The load function runs every time the data pack is loaded, either when the world is first opened or manually with the command slash reload. Now there's just one more step before our data pack is fully set up. We've created our tick and load functions, but now we need to tell Minecraft where they're located so it can run them at the correct time. So we want to go back to the data folder by clicking on it here and create a new folder within it called Minecraft. And then another inside that called tags. Then one last folder called function. 
within this folder create two new files called tick.json and load.json. Now once again in the description will be the text you need to put in these two files. You just need to replace the example prefix right here with the name of that folder you made. Since the name of my folder was example, I'm not going to change it. Make sure your tick function is specified in tick.json and your load function is specified in your load function like this. Now make sure you save both of these files with control plus S. You should see the little white dot here disappear, meaning that you don't have any unsaved changes in the file. Okay, okay, I know this has been a lot. I promise all the convoluted stuff is over now. Don't get too lost in the source. All we've been doing is creating folders and files. Now for the fun part, it's coding time. Let's take a look back at our tick and load function files. We can put any commands we want in here. In the tick function, I'm going to write effect give quacklib jump boost with a duration of one and a strength of 10. See how it's coloring it all nicely? And then once I'm done writing it, it even gives us these handy little descriptions on what numbers mean what. Now in my load function, I'm going to write set block the coordinates 0, 100, 0 with a diamond block. Let's save these files with Ctrl plus S and then go back to Minecraft to open our world. Okay, so now I'm in my example world and I have permanent jump boost 10. You can see here that it only lasts for one second, but it's being reapplied every tick so I constantly have it. Let's fly over to 0, 100, 0 and see if we can find a diamond block. Here it is. Now you'll notice that if I break it, it's not replacing itself instantly because the command that places it is in our load function. If I manually reload the data pack with slash reload, you can see that the diamond block replaced itself. Okay, now for the best part. Let's make our own function file. I'm going to go back into VS Code and in the same location my tick and load functions are located, I'll create a new file called motorbike.mc function. Now inside this file, I'll do the following. Play a sound effect, summon a pig at my location, force myself to ride the nearest pig, and then make me hold a carrot on a stick. Now if we go back into Minecraft, we first need to do slash reload to refresh the data pack. Every time you make a change to your data pack, you'll have to do slash reload in order for it to update in game. Now if we do slash function, we can see a list of our available functions. There's our tick and load functions and our brand new motorbike function. And there we go, we have a lightning fast vehicle at our disposal with the press of a button. Come on, get, get, giddy up, giddy up, come, 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 come. we're nearly there, come. <clears throat> and there you go, you've set up your very own data pack and now you can start using all the amazing features they offer as well as the amazing convenience of being able to edit your commands all from one place. If you have any issues setting your data pack up, I'll list some common problems in the pinned comment and you can also join the Minecraft Commands Discord server which has loads of people that will be happy to help you out in one of the help channels. Alternatively, you can also join my Discord if you would like to ask me questions directly or hear about upcoming events and map releases. If any of you want to see a tutorial on anything else or maybe a more advanced data pack guide, let me know in the comments. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have places to be. I mean, come on, seriously, I can walk faster than this.